G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So, Happy New Year. I really hope you guys were able to celebrate the New Year in some way, even though uh, in Sydney, Australia in particularly, we've had to limit the amount of people in our households to no more than five. I was a little concerned watching the date tick over to the New Year, thinking it might tick over to the 32nd of December 2020. <laughs> and that 2020 wouldn't come to an end at all. Uh, but thankfully it did, and it's now 2021. So hopefully we can all have a better year this year and put 2020 well and truly behind us and uh, get on with our lives, get on with some normality in 2021. But let's get into the first video of the year. This is gonna be a bit of a DIY video on how to make catfish caves, bristlenose catfish caves or cichlid caves uh, the cheapest way the easiest way and the neatest way possible. So I'm gonna show you how I do that and let's get straight into the video. So for this little project, we obviously need the terracotta sources. Pick whatever size you feel is necessary. Uh, a drill, we've got some safety goggles here, a dust mask for the dust from the terracotta pot, uh, some clamps to clamp down the terracotta pots, a block to elevate the terracotta pots off your surface, some hole saw drill bits. So um, these are some various sizes you can use and some sandpaper just to sand off the rough edges once we cut the terracotta pot. So here's the rig, and I'm doing this on my dining room table, but it's a very old table and I'm not too concerned about uh, doing it indoors. It is absolutely bucketing down outside. Now, obviously, if you have larger fish, you're gonna need a larger hole saw for your drilling. So this video really is intended to just give you the principal idea of the process that's involved. What we basically got here is two sources sandwiched together. You can see one is faced correctly, but right way up, and the other one is faced down, okay? So we're gonna be making two caves in the one go. So we've got uh, this little two by four elevating the sources up off the, off the workbench, off the surface, and then we've got the clamp holding them down together. Now you don't wanna to tighten this clamp too much because you will crack the terracotta saucer uh, with the pressure. These terracotta saucers are quite soft uh, once you start drilling into them. So um, I haven't put too much pressure on here, but hopefully it's enough to just keep the sources in, locked in position while I put the hole saw uh, through the side of these. I'm gonna put my dust mask on and my safety goggles, and I've got my vacuum cleaner handy to just pick up all the dust once this is all done. I really wish I could do it outside, but it is bucketing down. I just can't be bothered setting up my workbench out there. So I'll just get cracking with this now. I've got my drill, and I've got the drill bit on the end. This, this terracotta is very soft, so uh, I'm going to go very slow. I'll just stop there so you can see what has already happened. You can see a hole, pilot hole's already started. So I'll just keep going. Just light pressure. You don't have to go too fast. So this drill is gonna poke through the other side of the terracotta pots in a second. And I'm just anticipating that. Okay, so we've pushed through. So we've got the hole all the way through the terracotta pot now. So now, the actual teeth on the hole saw are gonna start doing the cutting around the edges of this. Now this cave, um, depending on your needs, might be too small, the hole opening might be too small, in which case, you simply use a larger hole saw. Okay, I'm just stopping for a sec because I could feel the rig slipping. You can see there. Again, I don't want to put too much pressure on this clamp, but you can see that the hole saw is done now. So I'll just put the drill bit back in the pilot hole. and continue with the sawing. We've got two catfish caves done. Next step is to sand them back because these edges are quite sharp and uh, you don't want your fish getting cutting themselves open on these edges. So cheap sandpaper, Really easy job to sand all this back because this, again, the terracotta is super soft. 
release the clamp. Let's have a look at what they, what they look like here. You can see the size. Uh, that might be too small for some fish, in which case you can just continue sanding back. Um, but we've got two bristlenose catfish caves now in one go. $1.60 each. Not too bad. So what we can do also, if this, if this opening is too small, even after sanding back the opening for the sharp edges, you can sandwich them together like this. And then you've got a catfish cave or even a cichlid cave. I intend to put these uh, with my lay loopies and uh, with my bristlenose catfish. So with the bristlenose catfish, I'm just gonna sit them like that on the glass, on the bare bottom tank. I wouldn't sit them like this on a gravel tank because this uh, saucer could sink into the gravel and the catfish or whatever other fish you have in that fish tank could get caught in here and trapped. So I wouldn't sit these on a sand bed or a gravel bed. I'd sit them only on bare bottom tanks. If you do have uh, a gravel bed, you could put a piece of tile or a, a piece of tile on the bottom here and silicon it to the piece of tile or uh, to a piece of glass and then sit this whole thing on the sand bed or gravel bed then to prevent uh, the fish getting trapped within the cave. However, I'm sitting them on bare bottom tanks, so I'm happy to have it like that. Nice tight fit for the male to uh, raise the clutch of eggs uh, in the cave. And he is able to block the hole with his body to prevent female bristlenose catfish from entering the cave as well. So you want the hole for bristlenose catfish to just be the right size, tight enough for him to fit through, uh, but, and also tight enough for him to block the entrance with his body if he doesn't want the female to go in. And again, just sandwich them together like this if you need a larger hole. Simple as that, $1.60 each as opposed to $15 each for one bristlenose cave. And hopefully you have these tools lying around your house uh, and you don't have to go purchase them just to make some bristlenose catfish caves. To sand this terracotta pot back, very, very simple, just some bog standard sandpaper. And uh, we're just sanding back the edges. So just rubbing the sandpaper back and forth on the terracotta, smoothing it all out, checking carefully with your finger that, you, that there are no more sharp edges. So it's already pretty smooth along all the edges, making sure they're nice and, nice and rounded, not jagged edges anymore. And that should be all you need to do. If you can run your finger across it, it's gonna be fine for bristlenose catfish. Their bodies are armored. The only thing you want to be careful with for the bristlenose catfish is their belly. Their belly is very, very soft and uh, they could cut themselves open and give, them an, give themselves a little bit of an infection potentially if they do cut themselves open on the sharp terracotta edges. So, see, that's all there is to it. So we'll sit it down like that. And I think most bristlenose catfish will be able to fit into that. Um, my largest albino male might not be able to, but he's a very large male. Um, the majority of my catfish that are spawning at the moment will easily fit into this, uh, into this gap. So um, yeah, there you go. I'll just do the other one now. You can see how sharp the edges are, hopefully on camera, compared to how round these edges are now. Side by side comparison. Top one is unsanded, bottom one is sanded. And these do look quite neat. Now you can make your bristlenose catfish caves out of a lot of different material. You don't need to use terracotta sources. You can use also terracotta pots, obviously. The hole's gonna be bigger with those and the inside cave will be larger for the male. Um, it might be a little bit too large maybe. You can use PVC pipes. You can use um, some thick irrigation pipe. Uh, and, and weld one side of the irrigation pipe together to create a cave. And uh, you can use coconut shells. Uh, I, I really like the coconut shell idea. I've never used them myself, but um, that you can make really nice looking, natural looking caves with the coconut shell. So um, you can grow java moss on them and plants and they look right at home in an in a aquarium. They look my, way more natural than these guys. But I'll try and grow some uh, java moss on these and just, uh, you know, see how they look, see if they will attach and um, go from there. But there you go, so that's another cave done. So I'll just give these a rinse now in tap water and um, they're good to go. Hopefully that will help some of you guys out there. 
not having to spend a fortune on Bristol Nose Catfish Caves. Uh, on average, I'm, I'm seeing prices around the $15 mark for one cave. And as you can see, if you've got the tools at home already, you can just simply buy these for a dollar, fifty dollar sixty each at Bunnings. They were a dollar sixty each for these, and I've made two as easy as that. So I'll rinse them off now, and I'll show you in, in the fish tank. Rightio. So this is a good example of all the types of bristlenose catfish caves you can have in your aquarium. Now you can see I've got a large, long fin male here coming towards my finger, and uh, there's a cave, a traditional catfish cave here. You can see how big that hole is and uh, how long the cave is and we're talking about 10 to 15 dollars for that bristlenose catfish cave you also see some terracotta pots in here that i've cut in half so terracotta pot on the left hand side is just a terracotta pot cut in half i've placed it near the uh, edge of the glass so there is a kind of a tight fit for the bristlenose catfish to go into they've never spawned in that they've only ever spawned in the bristlenose catfish uh, traditional catfish cave that you see here, that dark brown cave. On the, on the right hand side of the aquarium, you can see a quarter cut terracotta pot. I tried to do uh, a nice tight fitting where you just sit the terracotta pot on the glass surface. And there is actually a male bristlenose catfish in there at the moment, and they have spawned in that one because, so they're spawned in the one on the right here, because it is a very tight, uh, narrow opening for the bristlenose catfish to get in and the male can block the females from entering that cave. And obviously the one I've just made, this is a heaps neater cave compared to the one on the right or the one on the left. And um, I think it's gonna be much more useful for my bristlenose catfish to uh, spawn in. And hopefully I do get some spawning activity in these caves. My intention with these caves is I've got two adult male uh, longfin common colored bristlenose in this tank with three female uh, adult female longfin uh, normal colored bristlenose in here. So I've got five bristlenose catfish in this tank all up and I'm gonna take one of the males out of this tank and one of the females and pop them into another aquarium. So stop the males from fighting. I can basically hopefully spawn more longfin albino and common colored bristlenose out of these pairs. So you can see the bristlenose already uh, having a bit of a munch on the this new terracotta surface. The main thing though, hopefully I've given you guys a bit of an idea of how to do this yourself and how easy it actually is to make your own. So there you have it guys, how to make bristlenose catfish caves, cichlid caves, the cheapest and easiest way possible. I really hope you found that video informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons and also share the video if you can. I really will appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.